Hi, I'm Mr. Balerian, and uh, I'm here in my computer lab. And what we're going to focus on today is the Scorebot Robotics. This is the Scorebot ER3. And we have three, no four of these robots here for students to play with and learn automation, programming in the real world. So, there's a Scorebot robot. Uh, gravity feeder, so devices or objects in there would feed down, get picked up by the robot. There's a turntable that would spin objects around. And then we also have a sliding base, so this robot can actually slide four feet one way or the other. Right, so it can slide on this linear slide base, left to right. With the following students, please go to room 101 now. We have three control boxes here. You can tell that one of them is powered up because it is connected to this scorebot over here, which also is connected to this conveyor belt. So we're very, very happy with all this equipment that we have pulled together and an older laptop that normally runs Windows 98. But that's okay because we're going to be using DOS. So I have a student here. And he has um, programmed this scorebot to pick up that marker and pull it up into the air, move it over to our right, and then place it back down on that X. Right, so we're going to now take a look at powering up the laptop. So he will power it up, and he will be tapping the F8 key because we don't want it to get into the operating system of Windows, we want to be able to choose Command Prompt Only. Now, the student was taught yesterday how to um, use some of the DOS commands to navigate on the hard drive. To get a directory of all of the files on the hard drive, we type in DIR. The software that controls the scorebot is called Scorebase, and it's in its own directory. So we will change the directory to Scorebase with a CD space Scorebase command. Once we are inside the Scorebase directory, we can take a directory of all the files there by typing in DIR. But there are so many files that it's a couple of screenfuls and we may not see the files we want. So we will have all those files listed on a widescreen format. So that's DIR space slash W. Now we can see the entire contents of the score base directory. And we see that there are some files that have a file name extension of exe. Those are executables. Those are applications we can run and then we see many files with the file name extension L3 because we're using the level 3 application for Scorebase to create our programs. So let's run Score 3 by typing in SCOR3 and we do not need to press .exe. There is our software now, Scorebase level 3 robotic software. Now, the very first thing we do is pay attention to any messages. And at the bottom here, it says that this robot has not been homed. So we're going to select the home menu. And here are some choices, but the one we want to pay attention to is near the bottom where it says press G key to home the robot. So homing the robot has the robot check all of its motors and axis of movement. There's the base at work. This would be the shoulder, this would be the elbow, and this is the wrist, and there's the gripper. And when it's gone to its starting position, it's considered in its home position, similar to the other two robots. The one that's in storage over here, obviously, has just been folded and placed in a box for shipping. Wonderful. So, getting back to the screen, 
we see that we have all of the joints that are at the home position and homing is complete. Great. What we're going to do now is load a program that we wrote yesterday. So let's escape to the main menu. And what we did yesterday was in menu one. So let's go in there for teach positions to begin. We used these choices on the teach positions menu to move the base, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist pitch and roll, and the open and close gripper. And we also played with the fast and the 10 different levels of speed movement to manipulate the robotic arm so that it was in four positions. And those positions were one position above our object that we wanted to move. And this is a typical pick and place exercise. So we had a position we called position one above. Then we had a position right at the object, position two. We then had a position above our landing zone called three. And then we had a position at our landing zone where we wanted to place the object, four. So they are one, two, three, four. We taught the four positions and then we were programming the robot to go from one to two, close the gripper, go back up to one, move over to three, come down to four, and open the gripper and then back up to three. So what we'll do now is since the positions have been taught, we will now load our program that we created yesterday, but we ran out of time to run it. So we are in suspense. So let's press Escape to go back to the main menu and press 3, Program Handling, to then load the program, which is choice 2. And the name of the program was DRPEP. And it's done. You see, yesterday we had a can of Dr. Pepper, but we drank it since then. So now we're dealing with a whiteboard marker. Right, so we have loaded the program, and we are now going to escape from here. And we're going to go to number two, which is edit program. Wonderful. And we see here that we're on line 10. We haven't put in our 10th line of code yet but we can list for you the program that we've done in the past by pressing L and we can list from line which is choice 2 we want it to list from line 1 and Mr. Press Mandel, enter. contact the office please so Mr. Mandel. here are our nine lines of instructions for the computer to send to the controller which will then control the robot they are to open the gripper, to move to position 1, which is above the object, then to move down to position 2, and all of these are being done at the fastest speed. Once in position 2, we close the gripper, so it should hold on to the object. Then it goes back up to position 1, over to position 3, and by the way, we're moving our object in the air from 1 to 3, to avoid any obstacles that might prevent us from dragging or moving our object diagonally across from place to place. Then, once it's at position 3, we're over our target. We lower the object to our place target, which is 4. We open the gripper to release the object, and then we move the robotic arm back up to position 3, leaving the object in place. So, let's escape from the screen. All right, and let us test our positions to make sure that they will be effective with a dry erase marker instead of a Coke, sorry, excuse me, a Dr. Pepper can. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to escape from this menu. To test our positions, we're going to go to menu one, which is teach positions. We have already recorded four positions, and so we will uh, type in G to go to our positions and see where they are. G, go to position 1. Go ahead. Okay, so let's take a look at it from this perspective. 
will this be above the Coke can? Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Now, go to position two. Okay. As we look at this, we find that the marker itself is, of course, smaller than the can of Dr. Pepper, so we have moved it in place. That will be the pickup spot. Let's close the gripper. Good. We have a good grip on it. Now, let's move up to position one. Okay, great. Let's move it over to position three. Okay. Now, if the height of this marker is the same as the Dr. Pepper, then we're in good shape. However, if it isn't, we might very well be driving a dry erase marker into our X. Go to position four. That's pretty close. All right, so it's not on the X, but it's also not a collision. Open the gripper. Wonderful. Go back to position three. Great. So we can live with this. Right. So what we have done is we have the robot that has picked its marker from this spot right over here. Now. Lifted it up, two, two, moved it over, and lay, laid it down. So what we'll do is we'll put the marker back here in the pickup spot. Over on our screen, you can see we've been telling it to go to different positions. We're now going to tell it to go to position one. Great. And now we're ready to run our program. And by doing this, going out of this menu, the teach menu, and going to the run program menu, which is number four, we're going to run one line at a time for testing purposes, then run a single cycle where it goes through all the movements one cycle once, and then we can have it run continuously where it goes back and forth. We just need to feed it more dry erase markers. Here is our program going to be run one line at a time. The first thing it will do is open the gripper, press G to run it, Good. Our gripper is already open, so no action there. Next thing the robot will do is go to position 2. Press G to run it. Well, it's already in position 1, excuse me, so it's right there. Now, next thing it will do is go to position 2, run it. Wonderful. Then it will close the gripper. Gets a good grip of the marker. Next, it will go to position 1 lifting it up and away from any, any obstructions. Then it will go to position three, which is above the landing zone. Then it will go down to position four. And then it will open the gripper. It will do the next line, so we just press G. Okay, then it will we'll press G and it will go up to position three. Good. So it is behaving line for line the way we expect it to. We will now run an entire cycle. Over here on the menu, we will press 2 for run single cycle. And we will press G to let it run, but we will have our finger on the B key to press break in case there's a problem. Let it rip. Position one. Oh, open gripper. Grab it from position two. Up to position one. Over to position three. Down to position four. Open the gripper. Back up to three. Wonderful. Okay. So we have done a single line. We have done a single cycle. And now what we're going to do is have this run continuously by pressing three. Let's try that again. Run program, three, where it says run continuously. We are going to let that go by pressing G. We're going to keep a finger on B for immediate break in case something goes wrong. And over here, where we have the robot 
and the marker, it will continuously pick up the marker and place it over. And I will just be feeding it more marker by picking it up and putting it back here, hopefully faster than the robot comes back to get it. Let's see how this works out. So this is the robot going through our set of steps. And once the cycle is completed up here, it goes back to start the cycle. Now it dropped the robot, uh, the marker last time, because it's moving too fast. It didn't drop it in our tests before, but now it's dropping it more and more because it's jerking around as it is moving too quickly. We can adjust the speed so that it sets the object down, opens gently, and then moves away from it. The point at which we need to slow down the robot is not at this step. This is fine. It can go this fast. It needs to come down slower so that it doesn't wobble when it lets go. So one last time for review. That was position one. This is position two back up to position one, over to position three, down to position four, open the gripper back up to three, end of cycle, repeat cycle. And back over here, at any point I can press the B, and it says, press C to continue, or M to return to menu and you can see the robot over here has stopped. And that's how we make the score bot do something for us.